Hey guys, this is uh, Dr. Brian Mann, University of Miami, uh, giving you a little bit of something that we've been going over in some of our classes. And uh, instead of going over a study or a, a topic uh, or a study that's a part of a topic, as I've been uh, posting a little bit lately, I wanted to bring up a statistic that is great for strength and conditioning coaches to kind of get an idea of what has the biggest impact on the program. That's something that's super simple and everybody can do. It, it's just an Excel thing. You, you, it does not require SPSS or knowing how to use R or things like that. While all those may be helpful, uh, it's not necessary. Uh, so we're going to talk about the transfer index. Now the transfer index comes from Vladimir Tatsiorski. And if you've read any of the versions of uh, Science and Practice of Strength Training, you have come across it. Uh, and I, yeah, I often have been quoted, and well, I mean, I've said on podcasts and, and a lot of other things that uh, you've got to go and reread the foundational texts, the ones that somebody told you to read early on in your career, and you read them, and you know you got something from them, but you weren't really sure what you got. Uh, I try and reread some of those books every year. I, I, it's not that I reread every book every year. It's that I'll pick one or two a year and, and reread. And last year, I happened to do uh, Science and Practice of Strength Training, uh, which just came out with a third edition, so I've got to reread it again. And uh, for those of you who are on the fence, hey, they added some VBT in. So, uh, you know, I think that's a pretty cool thing that I had a contribution to what I consider a premier text. But uh, it's just a way to look and see what was the impact of a trained exercise on your untrained exercise, where your key performance indicators, a KPI, that uh, in case you haven't heard me mention that before, I, I talk about them all the time, and I just refer to them as KPIs. But hey, if I'm doing this training, what is it doing to make me a better player? Uh, I think that this is extremely vital, because in today's day and age, uh, we often are trying to prove our value. And sometimes it's some people are going to want to put their value in squat numbers or clean numbers or uh, just a, a single one number that shows, hey, I'm doing a great job. Well, if we start at the scoreboard and work backwards, we see that, hey, man, maybe uh, squats or cleans or, or something along those lines isn't necessarily what we thought that it was. Maybe we could get better results by going elsewhere. And we will, if you look at the transfer index, it's going to let you see how different groups of people uh, adapt differently. And maybe the exercises that you thought had a big impact didn't, and maybe the ones that you uh, thought didn't, maybe they did. Who, who knows? But if you don't actually calculate it out, you'll never find out. So from that, Dr. Zatsiorski, uh, this is just a straight-up uh, excerpt from his book. In the scientific literature, the result gained for a group computed as – post-training mean minus pre-training mean divided by pre-training standard deviation is known as the effect size. Okay. Uh, for the estimation of transfer, a ratio of the gains in non-trained exercises and trained exercises employed, the coefficient of the transfer of training is by definition the following ratio. The result gain in the non-trained divided by the result gain in the trained. And that's the transfer index. That's it. Okay. So why do you want to do it? Well, the mean, why do you divide the mean by the pre-standard deviation? Well, so then you know what the range was. Was it a very, very small range or was it a huge range? Let's say if the uh, mean was 20, that sounds huge. But what if the standard deviation is 150? Well, then we see that that's a small and probably not meaningful score. So it allows everything to basically, uh, two things. One, it gets everything into the same unit. And two, it gets everything into the same size. And by same size, I mean uh, whenever we compare the mean to the standard deviation. So then it just helps with congruence. So if we have the size of units congruent and we have the units congruent, then mathematically we're, we're set. So here again is another part of uh, an excerpt from that, that same book. Uh, they looked at the force at an angle of 70 degrees. Okay. So they look at Newton's there. So this would have been taken uh, probably at a, a biodex machine since we're looking at a, a actual joint angle. Uh, you can actually do
do that absolutely with the load cells since it's isometric. Uh, I'm not sure how, how that was taken. Uh, so they look at their force at angle 70 degrees with squat, force at 130 degrees in, in squat. So uh, we look at the before, the after, so then we see what the gain is. So the gain is 410 divided by 170. Now remember the, the uh, result gain is the change divided by the pre-standard de deviation. So we see that we have 410 divided by 340 equals 1.2. That just tells us the result gain. Now, if we look at the squat, they went from 95.5, the standard deviation of 23, to 107. So we see we have 11.5 divided by 5. Point, uh, divided by 23, and that gives us our 0.5 result gain. Then we just simply calculate 0.5 was the untrained, 1.2 was the trained, and then we see that the transfer is 0.42. Okay. Now we look at the force at an angle of 130 degrees. So here, let's maybe this will, will help for some context, because some people might get lost without that. So what they probably did was they looked at isometric, an extra uh, isometric intervention, and they looked to see what happened with the squat and see which one transferred better to the squat. Uh, so then they look at the isometric training at a joint angle of 130 degrees. So that's going to be way back behind, like near the, uh, like if you were doing a leg curl near the start of it, right? So they look at the change there that they see, ooh, we got a bigger gain. We have a 560 uh, with the standard deviation 230. And a pre-standard deviation of 618, so then we get a 0.91. Well, shoot. Huge mean, small, uh, and huge standard deviation. That gives us a small result gain. What about the squat? Well, we only went up eight kilos, okay, seven and a half, uh, plus or minus 28. Okay, so that gives us 0 0.27. 0 0.27 divided by 0.91. So our squat divided by our isometric intervention gives us a 0 0.3. So... Here's what, you know, this is what we're looking at. Like, which one had a better transfer? Well, it, it appears that the 70 degrees had a higher transfer. Now, I don't think that there is a set number like there is for things like effect size. You're just looking to see the bigger, the better. Uh, so I got some sample data here. Uh, let's just look at the squat and the clean as they result of vertical jump. So I looked at the 2003 to 2002 uh, data that I, you know, from, I was, while I'm at Miami now, I was at Missouri uh, as a coach for, uh, I, see, 2004 to 2018, 2017 as a coach, 2018 was only faculty and uh, uh, doing sports science over there. Uh, so, you know, I took some of the data that we had collected over the years there and just the squat the data and the vertical. So here is the pre-data. Uh, Pre-squat, 468 is the uh, squat. Pre-vert, 31. Pre-clean, 278. We see the standard deviations below. Now, we look at the change scores. So then we're looking at the uh, so 468 to 496. Okay, so they went up on average 28 pounds. Standard deviation is 203. And we look at the vertical jump change. It's about at 0.28 inches. Um, the clean change was 19 pounds. We see that we had a bigger increase in the clean, and we did the squat. But let's see what happens with the result gain scores. So we do the 28, the change, minus the pre-standard deviation, and we do that straight across. So our result gains, we have a 0.139704 in squat, a 0 0.022843 in vert, and 0.167886 in clean. So now we would divide the vertical jump, because we didn't train that. Uh, we just tested it. We weren't doing plyometric program at that point in time. Uh, and we'll compare it with the squat and the clean and see which one comes out better. Uh, so if we look at the vert to squat, we see a 0.16. Vert to clean, 0.13. So I've talked many times about how our squats transferred better than our cleans did. And this was actually not the year uh, whenever we did that study, uh, to say study, whenever I did that experiment that uh, I don't know if we ever published or not. Uh, 
about how the cleans were not related to vertical jump. Well, in this year, that was 2005, I believe, or 2006. Uh, in 2002 to 2003, it did. Uh, the, the clean numbers uh, were a little bit lower. Uh, we had a younger group, and we saw a greater transfer as a result of which. Now, just for your knowledge, we see the transfers here, 0 0.16, 0 0.13, uh, for the vert to the squat and the vert and clean. A squat to clean, clean to squat, whenever we see it's 0.83, it's a lot higher. There's a lot more transfer. Uh, and there's covariance there, of course. But if we're trying to worry about lifting the most weight, of course, we're you know, going to have higher transfer from one to the other. These aren't super high numbers. So I happen to just realize this and look at it just a few minutes ago. So I went and I calculated out, or actually I've already calculated out, and I just went and pulled it uh, from body composition uh, over the same period. And we see that the body composition was 0.41 per transfer uh, to 40. And then to the vertical jump, it was negative 0.5751. Okay, so if we go back and look, ooh, hey, those numbers are a lot bigger than vert to squat and vert to clean. Uh, if we look at the body composition to the vertical, then man, that's negative 0.57. That's pretty huge. Now, positive negative. Yeah, is it good or bad? Well, guys, we've got to apply context. So if I have, uh, if I have a, it, it depends on what we're looking at uh, to know if negative is good or, or bad. Uh, if I have a decrease in body composition, that would be negative. And an increase in vertical jump height, that would be positive. Well, negative and a positive are going to make a negative. Okay. Now, body composition to 40. Now, it was a negative body composition, and we looked at the time. So a decrease in time is negative. Those two negatives cancel out, and they give each other a positive. So you have to stop and apply some context uh, to some of these numbers to, to know. Uh, on general, the bigger the number, the better. Uh, and also, you need to stop and think, is a negative number good, or is a negative number bad? Is that what we want and expect to see? Or is it a surprise? Now, some possible breakouts. What do I mean by breakout? Is that, hey, you know, if we did this for the entire team, what happens if we look at different things like by their position? And, and uh, like a wide receiver versus a defensive back, I don't think it will matter. But if we look at a see if skill and mid and big, uh, vary. So what do I mean by that? Skill would typically look at like defensive backs, wide receivers, running backs, etc. Uh, and if, if you're involved in strength and conditioning uh, and you deal with football, uh, the, one of the ways that I've always just done it is use what the coaches classify with their 110 times, their positional group breakdowns. Uh, and that usually is going to group people together of similar uh, capabilities so that we know that, hey, if I'm looking here, we're good to go. Okay. So if you like this uh, and if you like some of the other things that we've been posted, hey, man, come join us at the U. Uh, you know, the website is sites.education.miami.edu. Uh, again, we have our undergrad in exercise physiology uh, that you can take uh, and uh, you can focus a little bit more towards strength and conditioning or if, uh, you know, you're trying to figure out what to do, well, maybe you look more towards the, uh, you know, uh, we make, we've got physical therapy, pre-med, and, of course, exercise physiology. Masters. We've, of course, got a master's in exercise physiology. We've also got a master's in strength and conditioning. So you can come down here and join myself and uh, Dr. Brian Biagioli, Dr. Joe Signorelli, Dr. Motaz El Tuki, Dr. Kevin Jacobs uh, in, in furthering education. That uh, Dr. Arlette Perry, I'm sure that I'm forgetting others right now, and it just uh, it's slipping my mind, Dr. Wes Smith. Uh, also, any day this was approved, and uh, we're currently finishing up the paperwork for the CEUs uh, through the NSCA for an online co uh, continuing education for coaches where you'll be able to get CEUs by taking some uh, a, a certificate program through here at the University of Miami so that you could get a certificate in strength and conditioning. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm excited about it. And hopefully that uh, we'll be able to see you guys either there uh, or in the classroom or at a conference. I hope all is well. Uh, stay safe, everybody, and signing off.